Bismillah Rahman Rahim. This video is about the uh, tumor like conditions of the bone. These are the references for this video. There are many non neoplastic conditions that simulate bone tumors, and they are together gathered under the umbrella of the heading the tumor like condition of the bone. These are the fibrous cortical defect and uh, contain uh, metaphysical uh, fibrous tube defects and non-acifying fibroma then fibrous dysplasia another member is solitary bone cyst which is also termed as simple bone cyst or unique emerald bone cyst the ganglion cyst of the bone is also termed as intraosseous ganglion the brown tumor of hyperparathyroidism and Langer and cell histocytosis are also members of this group. Fibrous cortical defect and non ossifying fibromas are together uh, grouped as metaphyseal fibrous defect. These are the common developmental abnormalities in which uh, fibrous connective tissue replaces bone. Uh, the children uh, above the age of two years are affected and in about 50% of the cases while uh, the 25% uh, of the patient are between the age of uh, 4 to 10 years of age. Uh, the, these lesions they arise eccentrically in the metaphysis of the distal femur and proximal tibia while 50% of these cases are bilateral or multiple. The, these lesions are small about uh, 0.5 centimeter or less than 0.5 centimeter the lesions of about 5 to 6 cm are termed as non ossifying fibromas which are usually diagnosed in adolescence. They uh, remain asymptomatic mostly and uh, sometimes they present with pain. The pathogenesis of this lesion is unknown and they are considered as a mm, developmental defect and a non neoplastic condition and this condition resolves in a few years and is and the defect is replaced by cortical bone. Uh, some uh, scientists consider this tumor of is uh, uh, histocytic origin because of the close resemblance of this tumor to uh, fibrohistocytic tumors. The only difference we have seen that in the morphology of these two lesions, the fibrous cortical defect and non ossifying fibroma is of size only and these are brown lesions with foci of yellow discoloration because there is abundance of uh, foamy histocytes and they have uh, got lobulated appearance. On biopsy, these uh, lesions are composed of blind fibroblasts. These are arranged in uh, pinwheel or story form pattern as is uh, evident in this uh, photomicrograph. There can be abundance of uh, macrophages uh, which uh, can aggregate or form clustered cells and the cytoplasm is foamy and sometimes they form giant cell also and uh, hemocytin is commonly present. This is non ossifying fibroma of distal tibial metaphysis and uh, this x-ray is showing an eccentric radiolucent lesion surrounded by a thin sclerotic rim. Uh, there is no periosteal reaction. So this is another case of non ossifying fibroma which is showing that there is a lytic radiolucent uh, lesion with sclerotic margin in the distal uh, radius. The metaphyseal cortical defect are diagnosed incidentally on radiographic studies as most of the patient remain asymptomatic. Uh, the lesion has got limited growth potential and most of the lesion resolve over time and uh, they are replaced by normal cortical bone. Some of the lesion non ossifying fibroma they enlarge and result in pathologic fracture. The diagnosis, uh, the treatment of uh, this uh, lesion is radiologic follow up first and uh, uh, cure attach and bone grafting. 
the fibrous dysplasia are benign lesion and they are considered localized developmental arrest all components of the bone are present in the fibrous dysplasia but they do not differentiate into the mature structure, uh, structures and they arise during skeletal development so this fibrous dysplasia is a developmental non neoplastic disorder of bone forming mesenchyme causing bone maturation arrest at a woven bone stage uh, these uh, fibrous dysplasia are present in various form if only a single bone is affected it is termed as monoosteotic when multiple bones are involved it is termed as polyosteotic or mesabrot syndrome is termed when the fibrous dysplasia which is of uh, which is involving numerous bone multiple bone is is associated with soft tissue myxomas it is termed as mesabrot syndrome while mccune elbright syndrome is the, the term which is used when this polyosteotic uh, fibrous dysplasia disease is associated with cafe au lait skin pigmentation and endocrine abnormalities especially the precocious puberty the fibrous dysplasia is uh, associated with mutation in genus 1 gene this is guanine nucleotide binding protein alpha stimulating activity polypeptide gene uh, which encodes alpha subunit of the g stimulatory protein uh, the mutation is the gain of function mutation and it results in constitutively active g stimulatory protein the uh, this uh, mutation occurs during amelogenesis and the person who har harbor these mutation they are genetic mosaic the constitutively activated adenyl cyclase and increase cyclic amp enhance certain function of the affected cell such as increase proliferation of the cell and disturbed osteoblastic differentiation the phenotype of uh, the uh, uh, this uh, affected person depends on the stage of embryo embryogenesis when the mutation is acquired and fate of the fate of the cell which uh, harbor this mutation uh, there is wide uh, variety of the lesion associated with this entity if the mutation hits early during the embryogenesis it results in mccune elbright syndrome and uh, while mutation which affect after the formation of a skeleton they result in monoosteotic variety uh, or monoosteotic fibrous dysplasia grossly the lesions of fibrous dysplasia are well circumscribed intramedullary tan white yellow and gritty the large lesions tend to distort the bone and cortical bone often become thin and expanded the fibrous dysplasia is characterized by presence of curvy linear trabeculae which uh, resembles with the chinese letters in appearance uh, and these curvy linear trabeculae of the metaplastic woven bone which uh, never mature it is present in a hypocellular fibroblastic stroma and uh, there is no osteoblastic uh, rimming present because of uh, arrest of the maturation and uh, so the histopathological appearance can be described as uh, uh, presence of curvy linear trabeculae of woven bone which are surrounded by a moderately cellular fibroblastic proliferation without prominent osteoblastic rimming there is presence of nodules of hyaline cartilage with the appearance of disorganized uh, growth plate in 20% of the cases while cystic generation uh, cystic degeneration hemorrhage foamy macrophage are common uh this radiograph is describing the features of fibrous dysplasia in which there is presence of a uh, an intramedullary lytic lesion that may expand and uh, it causes bowing of the bone and uh, 
thickening of the cortex and uh, the periosteal reaction is absent. On the left there is a plain radiograph of the pelvis which is showing a single irregular area of bone illusivency in the region of the left femoral neck and uh, there is another uh, lucency in the left ischium and uh, on the right this is the pelvic CT scan and uh, it is also uh, corroborating this lucency in the areas uh, in the both areas one is the femoral neck and another is the ischium these polyostrotic lesions are associated with uh, McEwnell Bright syndrome usually. The monostatic variety of fibrous dysplasia is associated with involvement of a single bone in 80% of the cases and uh, the age group for this lesion is a teenage and younger age group though there is no gender preference. These lesions stop enlarging at the time of growth plate closure and may reactivate during pregnancy. The patients are usually asymptomatic but may present as a disfigurement if the face is involved and they may present with pain discrepancies in limb length and pathological fractures. The usual site is rib, femur, tibia and jaw. The involvement of the femur produce characteristic crook neck deformity or shepherd crook deformity which is evident by this uh, radiograph which is showing uh, a shepherd crook deformity due to fracture sustained over the years the, uh, there is irregular marginated ground glass lucencies and these are surrounded by irregular uh, re by reactive bones then uh, the 0.5% of the cases they can uh, undergo malignant transformation and treatment of this uh, fibrous dysplasia is keratage though recurrence is common. The polyostatic variety of the fibrous dysplasia is less common and it affects only 20% of the cases. The people are affected at a slightly younger age. The femur, skull, tibia and craniofacial bones are involved usually. And these craniofacial bones are involved in 100% of the cases with extensive skeletal disease while if the uh, there is involvement of the uh, moderate uh, bones moderate number of the bones then it is present in about 50 percent of the cases uh, the involvement of the shoulder and pelvic girdle causes crippling deformities and fracture the associated uh, the symptoms uh, uh, which are associated with the progressive disease are recurring fractures long bone deformities and facial deformities they are worse if uh, the disease is uh, uh, manifested at an earlier age and 50% uh, of the cases also manifest uh, abnormal cutaneous pigmentation, pigmentation. The treatment for this polyostatic variety is uh, use of bisphosphonate to reduce bone pain uh, and uh, some of the cases of this polyostatic variety may undergo malignant transformation into sarcoma more likely after radiation. The McCune Albright syndrome of the fibrous dysplasia is a polyostrotic disease associated with cafe ole skin pigmentation and endocrine abnormalities, especially precautious puberty. This cafe au lait is a French word meaning coffee with hot milk. These cafe au lait spots are hyperpigmented lesions that vary in color from light brown to dark brown with a smooth or irregular border. 
this uh, variety of the fibrous dysplasia affect one to three percent of the cases and predominantly females are affected the common presentation is precocious puberty in uh, girls polyostrotic fibrous dysplasia and cafe ole spots these spots are large dark lesion with serpiginous border in the area of chest neck and back and these are almost exclusively present in women they are also associated with other endocrine abnormalities such as hyperthyroidism pituitary adenoma that secrete growth hormone and uh, pituitary adrenal hyperplasia 4% of the macular albright cases they undergo malignant transformation while treatment for the skeletal abnormalities is uh, bisphosphonate and the endocrinopathies are treated medically the mesa broad syndrome is a rare disorder it is the fibrous dysplasia uh, which is of a usually polyostrotic variety and it precedes soft tissue myxoma these myxoma are multiple intramuscular and usually present on the right side of the body and they, uh, this condition may be associated with, with the mccune and bright syndrome also the myxoma are cured by surgical excision another term is the fibrous dysplasia protuberance and these are the exophytic variant in which lesion protrude far beyond the normal bone contour mimicking surface bone lesion the solitary bone cyst which is also termed as uh, unicameral bone cyst or simple bone cyst is a benign lesion this is not a true neoplasm but uh, it is a, a disorder of the bone growth the commonly affected site is the medulla of the metaphysis adjacent to the growth plate of proximal humerus femur and tibia the humerus and femur are affected in two third of the cases while calcaneum is uh, also affected the predominant uh, victim of this disease are male and uh, male to female ratio is uh, 3 is to 1 80% of the cases are under the age of 20 years these uh, lesions are not true, uh, true neoplasm and uh, these are the disturbances of the bone growth so the lesion arises due to local disturbance of the bone growth with superimposed uh, trauma and uh, there is secondary organization of a hematoma or uh, some abnormality of the metaphyseal vessel which causes accumulation of fluid as a result of the accumulation of fluid there is expansion of the fluid cavity and uh, subsequent bone resorption by the activation of the osteoclast which are present in the neighborhood and uh, Uh, when this cyst expand the uh, this uh, expansion lead to the thinning of the overlying cortex so it is a slow process and this expansion is slow and the cortex is also thinned out slowly so uh, due to this slowness of the process the there is deposition of a periosteal uh, shell and uh, the patient usually present with advanced lesion usually with a pathologic fracture the morphology of this lesion is a simple cyst with a clear yellow fluid and this is lined by a brown fibrous membrane the radiologic appearance of the this unicameral bone cyst is a radiolucent lesion with a thin cortex but without any periosteal bone proliferation or expansion of the bone the unicameral bone cyst is not a true cyst and uh, it is lined by fibrous tissue a few osteoclastic giant cell hemosiderate macrophages chronic inflammatory cell and newly formed bone radiculi are also present as the cyst is expanding the osteoclast are more near the advancing uh, site of the lesion to allow expansion there may be uh, there may be presence of amorphous calcified fibrinous material 
resembling cementum. The onset of fracture alters the appearance of the lesion, produces a venous fluid within the cavity and hemorrhage. There is deposition of the hemocytrin and uh, macrophages in the cyst wall. This radiograph is showing a fracture in the area of radiolucence in the diaphysis of a humerus. There is no periosteal reaction and uh, there is thinning of the cortex. So to diagnose this lesion, the imaging studies and needle aspiration are sufficient. While uh, it is treated by interregional corticosteroid administration and by curettage and bone grafting. The ganglion cyst of the bone or intraosseous ganglion are uncommon lesions and they are present within the bone but close to a joint space at the end of the lung bone, often distal uh, tibia and proximal humerus. They may be an uh, extension of the soft tissue ganglion. This MRI is showing that there is a present of this small uh, ganglion cyst. On gross examination, this cyst is surrounded by condensed bone, often multilocular and loculated, with a gelatinous content and fibrous tissue wall. The cystic spaces have got no epithelial lining and uh, these are filled with the mucoid material and the, uh, there is presence of foamy macrophages also. Another tumor-like lesion of the bone is the brown tumor of the hyperparathyroidism, which is rare now at that case due to early diagnosis of the hyperparathyroidism. Uh, the, the skeletal involvement occurs in both the primary and uh, secondary hyperparathyroidism and the lesion can be multiple or solitary. Grossly, the, there are large lytic lesions which resemble bone tumor. Uh, as a result of bone loss, there is development of microfracture and this microfracture will initiate secondary hemorrhage and due to secondary hemorrhage, there is influx of the macrophages and ingrowth of the reparative fibrous tissue. Uh, vascularity, hemorrhage and hemocidin deposition is also seen and cystic degeneration is common. The histological appearance of brown tumor of hyperparathyroidism is characterized by increased osteoclastic activity as is evident by this picture, this photomicrograph uh, and uh, there is increased osteoclastic activity and irregular bone resorption. Also there is proliferation of the macrophages and fibrous connective tissue. The center of the uh, brown tumor or of hyperparathyroidism contain osteoclast, mononuclear, giant, mononuclear cells and uh, uh, fibroblasts with focal hemorrhage. This radiograph of the hand is showing numerous lytic lesions and bulbous swelling giving clue to the bone resorption. The symptoms of the hyperparathyroidism are summarized as stones, bones, moans and groans. The stone refer to the kidney stones and the bone to the skeletal changes. The moan refers to the psychiatric depression and other psychological abnormalities associated with the hypercalcemia. The groan is uh, related with GI irregularities associated with high season calcium. The uh, treatment for this uh, hyperparathyroidism is surgery. If it is due to uh, hyper, it, if it is due to parathyroid adenoma, they, they, it is treated by surgical removal of the parathyroid adenoma. Or if it is due to hyperfunctioning uh, tumor, uh, hyperfunctioning uh, uh, hyperplasia of the parathyroid. Three and half of the glands are usually removed and the other remaining half of the parathyroid is suffice to ensure that uh, this patient is uh, this uh, doesn't develop hypocalcemia. If uh, the surgery is performed, the uh, skeletal changes uh, revert back.
The Langerhans cell histocytosis is the malignant proliferation of dendritic cell or macrophages. It present as a solitary bone involvement or with the multiple bone involvement with skin involvement and multiple organ involvement also. Uh, the various organs which are involved are bone, liver, spleen and uh, others. The usually involved sites are skull, jaw, humerus, rib, femur, metaphysis or diaphysis both can be affected. The commonly affected age group is 5 to 15 years of age and in 60% of the cases males are affected more. The lesion of this entity is sharply circumscribed. This Langerhans cell histocytosis is discussed in detail in uh, a video which is present in bone pathology folder and uh, in, this, in this video the three characteristic lesion, the eosinophilic granuloma, hand shoulder Christian disease and the later survived disease, all three are discussed in details. The radiology of the Langerhans cell histocytosis is characterized by the presence of lytic lesions uh, that may extend into the soft tissue while histology is characterized by the infiltration by the Langerhans cells. These are the polygonal cells with the eosinophilic cytoplasm and uh, oval nuclei with longitudinal grooves resembling coffee beans. Uh, the, also, there is presence of eosinophils, giant cells, neutrophils, home cells, lymphocytes and plasma cells. The fibrosis and necrosis is also a feature of uh, this uh, lesion and uh, typical and typical, atypical both type of the mitosis can be discernible.